Hi boys and girls, Miss Galvin here. So we are going to have a social studies lesson today and our learning target is to know and understand why we celebrate President's Day. So we're gonna do a little reading with this book, Happy President's Day. In February, we celebrate a holiday called President's Day. This is a day for celebrating our country's presidents. We celebrate in February because it is near the birthdays of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Our country has had a lot of presidents, a total of 46 in all. These important men have all worked very hard for our country. George Washington was our country's first president. He fought in the Revolutionary War, which won our freedom from Great Britain. He helped us to create the United States. Thomas Jefferson was the third president of the United States. He wrote the Declaration of, Independ of Independence, which helped show England why we wanted to be our own country. Abraham Lincoln was our 16th president. He led our country during the Civil War when our country wanted to split in two, but he kept our country together united as one. Theodore Roosevelt was the 26th president of the United States. He loved the outdoors and helped protect lots of land, helping to create our national parks. Our 32nd president was Franklin D. Roosevelt. He helped our country make more jobs when it was very poor. He was the only president to be elected for three terms. He led our country through World War II. Our 35th president was John F. Kennedy. He was from a big family and was close to his brothers. He was president when Martin Luther King led the civil rights movement. He too wanted people to treat each other equally. Ronald Reagan was our 40th president. Before he was president, he was a famous actor. He helped fix our economy and also helped tear down a giant wall in Berlin, Germany. Germany could then be united as one country. Barack Obama was our 44th president. He was our country's first African-American president. He wanted very hard to make our country a better place to live and grow up. A lot of our presidents are on our coins and bills. This is a special way to recognize some important men in our country's history. So Abraham Lincoln is on the penny. If you have any change at home, you can grab it and look at this. Franklin D. Roosevelt is on the dime. Thomas Jefferson is on the nickel. And George Washington is on the quarter. And if you look at your dollar bills, if anyone has any cash, the one dollar bill has George Washington on it. The five dollar bill has Abraham Lincoln on it. A twenty dollar bill has Andrew Jackson on it. And a fifty dollar bill, well that's a lot of money, has Ulysses S. Grant on it. So we were talking about the 44th president of the United States and that is Barack Obama. And because it is also African American History Month, I thought we could read a little bit of this book called Presidential Pets to learn a little bit more about Barack Obama. So Presidential Pets by Laura Drissel. New life, new pet. November 4th, 2008 was a night of big changes. Barack Obama had just been elected the first African-American president of the United States. He and his wife, Michelle Obama, and their young daughters, Malia and Sasha, were going to be the country's next first family. They would soon leave their home in Chicago and move into the White House in Washington, D.C. Sasha and Malia would start a new school. As the first lady, their mom would become one of the busiest and most famous women in the world. Their dad was going to have the most important job in America. In his victory speech, Barack Obama said, Sasha and Malia, I love you both so much, and you have earned the new puppy that's coming with us to the White House. This was big news for Sasha and Malia. 
But over the years, first families have had all kinds of pets. Dogs, cats, mice, snakes, birds, elephants, sheep, horses, a hyena, a hippo, and even an alligator. Only three presidents in U.S. history did not have a pet in the White House. So why have pets been so popular with first families? Maybe it's because pets can make a big house, like the White House, feel more like a cozy home. Pets can force a busy president to make time for fun, and pets can give friendship to someone doing a hard and sometimes lonely job. Can you guess the most popular White House pet over the years? If you guessed a dog, you were right. The dog, of course, in fact, every president for the last 90 years has had a dog. From terriers to retrievers, spaniels to collies, each pet has had a personality as unique as his or her president. Wanted one presidential pooch. Barack Obama was elected president in November of 2008. Even though he wouldn't become president until January 2009, he needed to get right to work. Obama immediately began to choose who would work with him in the White House, but choosing a puppy for his family took him even longer. In January, the Obamas moved into the White House, but without a dog. People asked President Obama about the puppy nearly everywhere he went, at press conferences, during TV interviews, and even on a trip to Europe. Everyone was very concerned about when he was gonna be getting a puppy. It wasn't until April that the world met the new first dog, he was a six-month-old Portuguese water dog named Bo. His fur was all black, except for patches of white on his chest, front paws, and chin. Bo looked like he was wearing a tuxedo. He would certainly fit right in at fancy White House parties. This is Malia Obama with Bo on the White House lawn. President Obama running with Bo in the White House. Bo was a gift from Senator Ted Kennedy a brother of President John F. Kennedy and his wife. They had three Portuguese water dogs of their own. The Kennedys told the Obamas that Portuguese water dogs were perfect for the White House because they are obedient and smart. However, they need lots of exercise. Luckily for Bo, President Obama loves to stay in shape. Soon after Bo came to live at the White House, the Obamas took him out to meet the press. Cameras snapped, video cameras rolled, reporters shouted questions like, where will he sleep? And have there been any accidents? All eyes were on one excited little puppy as he got to know his owners and new home. It was not the first time that a first pet had completely stolen the show, and it certainly will not be the last. I hope that you enjoyed learning about President's Day and a little bit about Barack Obama with me today. What I would like for you to do is I would like you to think about if you were ever going to be president of the United States of America, what kind of pet would you want to have and why? And I want you to do a written response saying, if I were president, I would have a, would it be a hyena? Would it be a giraffe? Would it be a dog? Would it be a cat? Would it be a bird? And why you're choosing that pet. So I want your opinion. Like we're all working on opinion writing this nine weeks. So I want you to do an opinion writing on, if you were president, what your presidential Mr. Larson, opinion. call the office. Mr. Larson, call the office. So write your opinion on what your presidential pet would be and why you would choose that as your pet and bring it into your teacher tomorrow. I hope you all have had a wonderful Wednesday and I'll see you tomorrow at school. Bye guys.